today we are going to be telling a tale and also figuring out what we're going to do about it. We're going to be talking about American Thanksgiving. And I have to be very clear here because I don't know anything about any other Thanksgiving around the world. I know that there are actually differences between Canadian Thanksgiving and American Thanksgiving. And there are a couple other countries that also have Thanksgiving days. But ours is especially wrong in so many ways. It has a origin story that you probably don't know. So, well, let's talk about Thanksgiving Day and actual Thanksgiving as we walk together down Creation's Pass. Hello, everyone. My name is Charlie. I am a Crystal Pagan Druid and Priest of Bridget. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian. I am a Crystal Pagan Druid and sous chef to the doctor. Today, we're going to be talking about American Thanksgiving. I can't stress that enough. I know other countries have Thanksgiving days. You're going to have to do the homework on your own Thanksgiving day to find out what its origins are and why it's practiced and why the lore is what it is about it. But our Thanksgiving is uh, problematic. I think its problematic nature leads to a lot of the strife that happens all the day. I tend to be one of those people that thinks that if you have a flaw at the beginning, it tends to be carried through. Like sometimes you just have to try again. Sometimes there's just no like papering over the, the, the crack and getting to the, you know, getting it better. And I, I kind of feel that way about this holiday and a couple other American holidays. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app that you happen to be listening to us on. We do original Christo Pagan and Druid content five days a week, Monday through Friday. And you don't want to miss anything because we have a lot of fun stuff coming up. And yeah, you may be asking yourself, this is Christo Pagan? Oh, it's going to be when we get to the end. Okay. So you mean this holiday isn't about subservient indigenous people giving everything they have to white overlords and being no. grateful about it? No. You mean this isn't Pawnee? No. And it really has nothing to do with that Thanksgiving. So the, the problem with this holiday is it has been cloaked in so much lore to distract people from its actual intended purpose that if you actually look at the holiday, you can see what its purpose and goal was and why most people are like, why do we do this? Because it is not a gratitude festival. It is not a harvest festival. For anybody who's been listening to this podcast for any period of time, you know, I'm kind of all in on harvest festivals. I celebrate three of them a year and we did episodes for all of them this year. You can go check them out. A bunch of episodes for them. A bunch because... I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with gratitude. I learned it wasn't a gratitude festival by uh, accidentally going grocery shopping for two hours the day before Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. Like if it would only just be a gratitude festival, that would be a far more pleasant experience for everyone involved. And if you're a Star Trek fan, just do what I tend to do on this day and just go kill their joy. If you know, you know. And if you don't, look up the Joran Gratitude Festival. Yeah. There are very few like holidays in Star Trek that are like, why don't we have that in real life? But that that's one of them. Okay. So how did this holiday get started? The pilgrims? No. No. See, they did have a few Thanksgiving days, but that was a period of religious obligation where you were required to give thanks to their God for not killing you. We didn't die yet. Yay! Which, fair enough, after they landed, the pilgrims had a rough go of it. Not rough enough, but Not rough enough. But I mean, they really did a lot of things to themselves that didn't make their settling easy. It became a practice, as it is around the world, to periodically have harvest festivals. And yes, some of the original Thanksgivings is, 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 were that. The problem is, our Thanksgiving is not that. And before people start talking about, well, Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War, yeah, that didn't catch on. We, we can talk about this holiday as a series of failed starts, but that's not what it was. In the Christian faith, they misunderstood a day of Thanksgiving as it is presented in the Torah and would periodically declare a feast of Thanksgiving and quote all of the passages about a feast of Thanksgiving from the Torah and pretend that they were doing something that God commanded them because... Oh, so much of puritanical Christianity is just robot work. But th those were one-offs. They were just one-offs. Now, our holiday goes back to a person named FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. 
a very interesting and quirky politician, if there ever was one. Uh, if you know, you know. If you don't, look into him and his and his glorious wife. It's amazing. His wife should have been president, not him. Just saying, she's amazing. Have issues with him. He became president after the Great Depression. Things were bad. Things were not really good economically. He was trying to figure out how to get people to spend more money. How do you actually improve the economy? See, the deep dark secret about how the economy works, other than it's all imaginary play money that gets moved around and we pretend so hard it has actual consequences on people's lives, is that politicians can hurt an economy, but they really can't help it all that much. They can make bad decisions that cause problems, but we don't have a managed economy like that. We did back under mercantilism back in like the 1600s. And when I say we, I mean, some of the early colonies still had that mercantile economy until the 17 and 1800s, but we don't really have that kind of managed economy. Capitalism has taken over. So you can't just say economy be good. You have to find a way to trick people into spending money. And so Franklin Delano Roosevelt, to encourage economic growth in the country, declared that every fourth Thursday in November would be a day of Thanksgiving and that everyone should celebrate by everybody getting together and having a really big meal. Spend money. Spend, 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 spend. That is where our holiday came from. You can see it in, in its bones. Like it's, it is so dyed into it. And it is such a recent phenomenon as well. We really want to make it an ancient thing. It's not. It was on Halloween 1939 that he made this declaration. There, there may be, there actually probably are still some people alive that remember the real first Thanksgiving, you know, the one that happened after Franklin Delano Roosevelt made it a thing. And I'm not one of those people that's like government bad or anything like that. I, I am one of those people that says when the purpose of your celebration is just money. Well, as Jesus said, you can't worship God and mammon. This really is a mammon celebration. Now, some families have broken out of this. And if yours is one of those, more power to you. That's kind of what the last part of this episode is going to be about, is how to take the day off some people get or the day that you're expected to do this and turn it into an actual Thanksgiving. But you can really see in the marketing for this holiday, in all of the things that you're supposed to have for this holiday. I, I remember when all the companies were trying to encourage people to burn their houses down by frying their turkeys because... Turkey fryers had gotten on the market from some of the larger manufacturers and they wanted to make sure they were selling a bunch of them without proper cooking instructions and explanations of, you know, if cold turkey go into hot oil equals fountain of fire or if the turkey too wet, you know, wet things going into a big vat of boiling oil, whoosh. If you notice and you pay attention, things even have a lot of gadgets associated with it, a lot of products associated with it. Oddly enough, and I think that they finally have started changing this a little bit, but when they realized nobody's going to be putting turkeys everywhere, notice all of a sudden the, do you have your Christmas decorations up yet? Do you have all of the things out that you just bought your new giant inflatable this, that, and the other thing? They're brand new. They're new to the market. Have you gotten your giant sculpture of whatever out yet? And like with secular American Christmas... When people bemoan that it has been commercialized, they're missing the point. It was commercial from the beginning. The, the point of declaring both Christmas, which, remember, when our country was founded, it was illegal in most of the states to celebrate Christmas in this Christian country because Christmas was seen as a bad thing. I know for my poor little neurodivergent brain, once I got that, its original point was commercialization and selling stuff and money. And that it has just been more and more true to its own nature over the years. I at least was able to understand better why this, why that. And so many moments where I was like, why this? Why that? Why? The ritualized can of cranberry sauce that no one eats. If you eat the cranberry sauce, that's great. If you like to make your own cranberry sauce, that's great. I just know I've been to so many Thanksgivings throughout my life at various family gatherings. And when I lived far enough away from family at friends, houses and whatnot, where there was always, and it was just bloop out of the can, still had the ridges on it and everything, sitting on the table. And by the end of the night, it, 
you could just zoop it back into the can because no one took an, even a knob off of it. It's just the ritual sacrifice of the can cranberry sauce because is it Thanksgiving if you don't have the ritual can of cranberry sauce on the table? It's too true. Like I was one of those few people that actually ate ate it. That was because I it was Jello. It was it was cranberry Jello. But I understand it, it's that was another one of those whys. I was like, why did they get this can and nobody touch it? And then I'd be scared to eat any of it because I thought, well, obviously it's bad. Nobody else touched it. <laughs> Even though I'd be like, oh, cranberry jello. Well, I, I truly believe that I don't understand cranberries. Well, I was hanging out with more Southern folk and they had ambrosia. And I was just like, this blows cranberry in a can out of the water. And if you want to start a war, ask somebody who has the, who makes the best ambrosia. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's just mischief making for the holidays That's, then. <laughs> but you'll notice the very commercial na- nature of this. Are you traveling? The day parade. The Macy's Day Parade. Like like the parade itself, I love the parade. I'm not knocking the parade itself, but the entire thing is commercial. I, I enjoy what, like, what the floats are cool. And the acts and stuff are and is a, today especially much more a celebration of commerce than it is anything else. It it has become increasingly co- obviously commercial. Like it's always yeah. been commercial, but Hearing them explain each float starts with the name of the like three brands that spots for kids now. And I don't remember that from when I was younger. And this isn't just a, why is everything commercialized now? It's understanding the roots of where things are coming from. So we know how to fix it. because people go into debt to travel for Thanksgiving. People go into debt to make these elaborate meals, which often include a lot of foods that no one is going to eat that are just traditional. And that is the point of the holiday to spend a bunch of money, but that doesn't have to be the point of our holiday. Because once you realize that it's not that Thanksgiving or even Christmas has been commercialized, that is that it's the point of the secular version of both of these holidays to just be commercial, then we can start asking ourselves, what do we do on this day? I personally feel like I, I have nothing to give on Thanksgiving. Like Thanksgiving to me is Turkey Day. Because we don't do turkey as much as we could. And I, I like turkey. We we have a meal that I really enjoy. But I've had my three harvest festivals already. This is the pagan in me that I already had my Lunasa. I've had everything from Lunasa to Samhain, the three harvest festivals. I, I've done my gratitude. Whereas the chef side of me is like, yay, it's an opportunity for a feast. But along with that, I am making sure that I'm cooking foods that we're going to enjoy, that we're going to eat. I'm not cooking just to cook and throw away stuff or to be wasteful with it. I don't know, in my head, kind of like, it's the bonus harvest, the the we did good this year harvest, harvest festival, because to have a harvest festival after Samhain means you're really prosperous (laughs) in a way. And I kind of try to look at it like that. It's a feast to celebrate our prosperity from the year and giving thanks for that. Again, I, I am not opposed yeah. to people doing actual things. Doing stuff like I said, I'm kind of thanksed out by the time we get to this holiday. And I feel like a lot of pagans may feel that as well, because if you are actually celebrating the more traditional calendar, like I, I celebrated at Lunasa, I celebrated at the Equinox. I celebrate, I, I did, did my Thanksgivings on, and even deeper Thanksgivings on, on Samhain because the family were here and really those deep connections and I do gratitude getting ready for the new year. And so if that's you, that's completely okay. And reconstructing it, you can use it as a day of rest. Since most get the day off anyhow, don't feel pressured to have to do a bunch of cooking if that's not going to bring you joy. Rest. Take the day of rest. One of the things over the years that Thanksgiving has become for me is it's found family celebration day more than it is anything else. If there is a specific thanks for Thanksgiving for me, it is a celebration of found family because whether it's online or in person, depending on proximity for people, sometimes it's both. We, we have a lot of friends that either don't have those connections to their family that would be conducive to spending that much time with them. I know since 2016, for I think obvious reasons, I do not attend the family Thanksgiving celebrations anymore because... I don't want to have those kinds of fights with my cousins. Or as I like to say, if it's an obligatory visitation, that should just be done during the regular drudgery of the week, not on a set-aside feast day or holiday. 
if you want to keep it special, then you shouldn't be forcing yourself to do those visitations. The visitations should be done other times if you feel the social obligation to have to do it. A lot of us who are queer or just pagan have experienced that separation from family. I, I, I hate it when people say found family is just as valid, and I almost like fell into the trope of saying that. But I think found family is so much more important than you, your blood family. Now, found family can include members of your blood family. That's fine. But as we like to point out, the often misquoted, because it's shortened phrase, blood is thicker than water, literally means the blood of the covenant is thicker than the waters of the womb. That's the full phrase that those that you have agreed to be around are often closer to you and less likely to betray you than those that you were born with because it's a di different experience. And like I said, it's wonderful when any members of your birth family are a part of your found family, but that is not the case for most of us, especially nowadays. I think this year is going to be found family appreciation day, hopefully for a lot of people. And I say hopefully because given what happened this year, one conservative commentator is very much on the record that he has been told by his mother that he is not welcome at Thanksgiving this year. And all of his siblings have agreed that he has been kicked out of the family. He is not welcome at all to attend. And I see that happening in all of like the, th those separate lines are really being drawn this year. This goes to speak to and goes back to that sacred spaces and part of sacred spaces is setting up the boundary of that space and setting up what is allowed in the space and what is not allowed in the space. Part of this holiday is being mindful of that as well. It's what often ruins the holidays for a lot of people as they forget. It becomes obligatory visitation day, like I said, where you, yeah. you have to go visit family members that you never talk to the entire year. Well, if you feel you have, for a good reason, to for a good reason, if you feel you have to visit and check in on a family member you haven't talked to all year, do that on a Monday, on some random week, like. You know, call them and go, hey, is it cool if I come over and hang out for a little bit and we talk and whatever and just visit? Like, don't, don't ruin your feast day. If it, if it is going to be a day that's sacred and set aside, don't include them in that circle. It's okay. Because with everything going on in the world, not just here in the States, but just in the world right now, I think it's more important than ever to find your Tua, to find your people, to find those people that you will have their back and you know that they will have yours. I don't mean that in a, it's time to just start cutting people off and making little insular communities for yourself kind of a way. I mean that in that we are seeing people taking sides and some of those sides are not for good causes. There are words that we can't say on a lot of the platforms now that if you have been kind of really online, you know what those words are and the words I'm trying to say, but a lot of words have been, uh, taken away from us if we want people to see our content. So that's why I'm being so circumspect in my language here. That's also why I talked about visiting on a different day, because remembering one of our prime rules, you know, all life is impermanent. Nothing is permanent. So just because you're not going to allow them in your sacred space to ruin this day you've set aside for your feast, doesn't mean you've cut them out forever and ever. It just means like you might visit them I don't know, sometime in March or sometime later in next year or whatever time needs to pass to come back around that where you can go. This is the time we can sit and talk. You got 15 minutes. <laughs> then I'm out. No, just kidding. Or maybe, maybe that's all you can tolerate, you know. I, I, you, you know, for, I, I've yeah. said that to people. I'm, <laughs> I have an alarm set. But actually, yeah, we, we have done that before where we felt the special obligation to visit the person. We checked in. We allotted a specific amount of time. We did a visitation and they demonstrated they hadn't changed and we felt we felt satisfied in doing it. Dusted the yeah. dirt off my shoes as I walked out the door. Yeah. But make sure that you are with your people. And that, like I said, that might be virtually online. A lot of the people that are in my found family are scattered across the country. I have people that I consider my siblings from New York to California and all the way down into Mississippi and all the way up into Michigan. Actually, yeah. Still a couple in Canada. Like, Canada is not. <laughs> the one person that immediately came to mind is not still in Canada, but yeah, yeah there are still a few up in Canada. 
so it's not practical for all of us to meet up, especially when all the prices are raised because everybody's going to be traveling and everything for something like this. So we often will make a point to, we meet on line, hang out with each other that night and just be there for each other, tell stories, all, all that good, good stuff, text with each other, call each other, but don't spend it alone unless that's what you want to do. Cause I, I do feel like with all of the conversations going on the, right now, it's very important for us to realize the difference between alone time and loneliness. Loneliness is actually an emotion that your brain creates when it desperately wants to talk or connect with somebody and has nobody it feels safe talking or connecting to. It's actually a distress signal that your brain sends out of, I have no one. Alone time is just wanting to be alone. And sometimes we just want to be alone and that is fine. But if you're experiencing loneliness, if you're feeling that distress, it, it is not always easy to find your people. It took me a really long time to collect the wonderful group of people that I consider my friends and family, but you, you don't find them hiding away in your house or being quiet online. I met some of them from doing live streams. There were people that I met in chat that we started hanging out in discord. And then we started meeting each other in real life. We are full war friends and family. Now keep yourself safe. Don't do anything reckless, but find your people, find your Tua and find that place where you feel safe and accepted to be you. Cause that to me is what this holiday should be about. Not about, isn't it wonderful how the people we colonize treated us so well? Because you no, know, if you have nothing else to do and you're looking for homework or assignment, look up blood quantum and look at what we're still doing to native American people at this country right now. Ask yourself what you might be able to do to help make change. Look into the funds that are helping to raise money to find the many missing women from the reservations and to help with the violence that is continuously ongoing there. And that has gotten worse since the election. Then you can celebrate our, <laughs> that you are at least trying to be part of the solution and not continuing to absolutely be part of the problem. Yeah. We didn't talk a lot about gratitude or Thanksgiving in this episode because we have entire episodes about that in our Lunasa and uh, other episodes. I think we actually have an entire episode on gratitude that we've done. So if you're looking for more on that, check out the back catalog. Don't feel pressured to celebrate a literally governmentally mandated holiday to cause you to spend money. If you don't want to celebrate any holiday, don't. But it is a good time to be a mixture of your people and to just find some coziness. Let's make it the National Day of Huga. Yeah. Because... Yes, I could be down for that. All righty. Thank you all for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. Let us know what you're planning to do this Thanksgiving. And if you're not in the United States, does your country have a Thanksgiving? Do you celebrate it? What does it mean to you? I, I would really love to know because our Thanksgiving is so cursed that it's hard for me to wrap my head around a, a non-pagan Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving that hasn't been tainted by all of that. So if you are in a different culture or country, please let me know. Well, I know that Canadian Thanksgiving is last week. It, no, it's in October. It's in October. Okay. I know it's earlier. Yeah. But that's about all I know. <laughs> yeah. And from the few Canadians that I watched that it's a harvest festival, because I hear that friends yeah. used a lot so in regard to Kind of like Samhain, just before Samhain. That's my understanding, but I, like secular Samhain, that's not Halloween. Closer. <laughs> Six of one, half a dozen of the other. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. I would love to know what you do i find it fascinating to just oh my country needs so much reform and change anywho if you're listening to us on youtube or spotify you leave a comment right there if you listen to us anywhere else even if they think you can leave a comment they won't let us know that you did so leave a comment anyway because engagement is magic and then go over to creationspast.com click on chat and you can leave a comment there and we will know and be able to respond if while you're there, you have a few dollars rattling around that you'd like to help us out with. Maybe think about joining a membership. You can also support us on Ko-fi and Patreon. I am CE Dorset on both. That money does go a long way to helping us keep the power on, keep food on our table and a roof over our heads. But if you don't have any money to give, don't worry. Trust me, I understand. There's so many people I want to be sure do that I just can't right now. I get it. Tell somebody about some of the episodes that we've done that you like. That helps us out more than you could possibly know. 
Also, you can engage with us. We've been spending a lot of time on Blue Sky lately, but we were also on Threads at Creation's Pass. Lord of the Hunt, we have a feast coming up. May we plan our strategy wisely and have a prosperous day. Amen. Amen.